If you're interested in partnering with Magical Storybook English Nanny Bedtime Stories or wanting to know more about sponsorship opportunities, then visit our website www.magical-storybook.com. You can also download free read-along books to accompany our fairy tales. Welcome to Magical Storybook English Nanny Bedtime Stories, a collection of children's stories from around the world. The Little Mermaid Far out in the ocean, where the water is as blue as cornflowers and as clear as glass, there is a place that is as deep as a hundred church steeples. And it is there that the sea folk live, in a world that is filled with the most marvellous trees and flowers that move in the water as though they were animals. All kinds of fish dart back and forth among the branches, just as birds flit through the trees here on the land. It is also the place where the palace of the Sea King sits, formed from coral and clearest amber. The roof is made of mussel shells, which open and close with the tide. It's a wonderful place. The Sea King is a widower, and his elderly mother keeps the palace for him. She is a clever woman and very proud of her noble birth. She always wears 12 oysters on her tail, while the other ladies of the court are only allowed to wear six. She is very fond of her granddaughters, the little sea princesses. They were all lovely, but the youngest was the most lovely of all. Her skin was soft as a rose petal, and her eyes were as blue as the sea. Like all the other sea princesses, she had no feet. Instead, her body ended in a wonderful fishtail. She was a mermaid, and this is her story. The youngest mermaid princess was a very quiet child and full of dreams. She loved hearing her grandmother's stories of the human world above them and the tales of ships, cities, people and animals thrilled her and she would ask to hear these stories again and again. She would try to imagine all the wonderful fragrances that the land flowers had for those at the bottom of the sea had no scent. When you are 15, said her grandmother one day, you will be allowed to rise up out of the ocean by moonlight and watch the great ships sailing by. You will see the woods, the mountains and the towns too. But the young mermaid had many years to wait until her 15th birthday and so each night she would instead stand by her open window and look up through the dark blue water towards the moonlight. Eventually the young princess's 15th birthday arrived. She said goodbye to her father and grandmother and swam towards the surface of the water. The little mermaid was excited to breathe the fresh air for the first time. She looked around her, the water was calm and there was a great three-masted ship nearby. She could hear music and singing coming from the ship and she watched as the sailors lit hundreds of brightly coloured lanterns that were hanging above them. She swam up to a cabin window and peeked inside. There was a crowd of brilliantly dressed people dancing. One of them was a very handsome young prince with dark eyes. It was his 16th birthday and he was having a party. The sailors up on the deck danced the night away and as soon as the prince appeared among them, they lit a hundred rockets that flew through the air, making it as bright as day. This startled the little mermaid and she ducked under the water. When she returned to the surface moments later, it was like all the stars in the sky were falling around her. Never had she seen such fireworks. She watched the handsome prince late into the evening and eventually, when all the lamps were put out, the ship began to sail. But soon the clouds were gathering and lightning flashed in the distance. The sailors realised that they were in for a terrible storm and they all rushed to man the sails. 
Within minutes, the waves were rising up around the ship like towering black mountains, causing it to pitch and roll as it sped on. One moment the ship plunged into the valley between the waves and the next it surfed dangerously over the top of them. It creaked as its thick timbers began to give way under the heavy blows of the waves and when the mast finally broke in two, the ship listed onto its side and water burst into its hold. The Little Mermaid could see that the people aboard were in trouble. She looked out for the prince and when the ship split into two, she saw him sink down into the water. She dived down through the waves until she found the prince. He was exhausted and close to death, but she held his head above the water and let the waves carry them both along wherever they were going. At daybreak, the storm ended and over the calmer water, the mermaid could see the snow-capped mountains of dry land. She swam towards them, still holding the unconscious prince. When she got nearer, she saw a monastery with orange and lemon trees growing in its garden. The sea formed a deep harbour there and making sure that she wasn't seen, she laid the prince down on the sand. Suddenly, bells started chiming and soon after, a number of young girls came running out into the garden. The little mermaid swam behind some tall rocks and watched as the prince regained consciousness and the people led him inside. Then she swam sadly back down to her father's kingdom. She returned to the harbour every day, hoping to see the prince again, but she never did. Each time she became sadder and sadder, and when she could finally bear it no longer, she told her secret to one of her sisters. Her sister told her that she knew who the prince was and where his kingdom was. Together they rose from the water in front of a beautiful palace that was made from pale golden stone. It had a great marble staircase that led down to the sea. The little mermaid's eyes widened when she saw the prince walking down it. Each night she would return and watch the prince row out into the sea on his boat. He would sit and play music under the stars and the little mermaid would follow him and listen. One evening she asked her grandmother to tell her everything that she knew about the upper world. Do humans live forever? she asked. No, replied her grandmother. They live a much shorter life than a sea folk but they have an immortal soul which does live on forever, even after they die. It rises up through the air and makes its way to a beautiful place that we sea folk will never see. We don't have an immortal soul, but we do live for 300 years. I would gladly give up one of my 300 years, sighed the little mermaid. If I could be a human being for just one day, and gain an immortal soul to take me on to that heavenly realm. The only way that you can get a soul, said her grandmother, is if a human being loves you so much that his heart joins with yours and makes them one. Then his soul would dwell in your body too. The little mermaid smiled. Maybe the prince would love her this much. But then her grandmother continued. However... The thing that makes you so beautiful, your tail, would be considered a strange thing indeed to a human. They have two awkward props, which they call legs. That is what they find beauty in. They would find your tail very ugly. The little mermaid sighed and looked unhappily at her fishtail. She decided to visit the sea witch, who she had always been so afraid of. Perhaps she'll be able to help me, she thought. She swam to an area of the ocean that she had never been to before and saw huge whirlpools which were like roaring mill wheels. They were snatching everything within their reach and dragging it down to the bottom of the sea. 
The Little Mermaid knew that she had to swim through the whirlpools to reach the sea witch's waters. Her heart thumped with fear and she nearly turned back. But then she remembered the prince and the souls that the humans have and she summoned enough courage to go on. Eventually, she came across a large muddy clearing in the forest. There stood a house made from the bones of shipwrecked men. And outside it sat the sea witch. I know exactly what you want, said the witch. You want to get rid of your fishtail and have two props instead. It's very foolish of you. But you shall have your way. But be warned, it will bring you grief, my proud princess. The witch continued. I'll prepare you a potion, and before sunrise tomorrow, you must swim to the shore and seat yourself on dry land. Then drink it. Then your tail will divide and shrink until it becomes what the humans call a pair of legs. But it will hurt, and every step you take will feel as if you are treading on knife blades. Are you willing to suffer all of this? Yes, said the little mermaid, shaking, but still thinking of the prince. Remember, added the witch, once you have taken human form, you can never come back through the waters to your father and sisters. You can never be a mermaid again. And if the prince chooses to marry another, the day after the wedding, when the sun rises, you will die and become nothing more than foam floating on the surface of the ocean. The little mermaid turned pale, but she said that she would take the risk. The sea witch hung her cauldron over the flames and began brewing. When the potion was ready, she poured it into a bottle and the little mermaid went to take it. But before the witch would hand it over, she said, First, you must pay me, but I don't want money. I want the most valuable thing that you own, your voice. And then she cackled loudly. The little mermaid was horrified. My voice, she cried. But if you take my voice, how can I talk to the prince? You will still have your pretty eyes and your grace, said the witch. With these, you can still win the heart of the prince. The mermaid nodded and with a swish of her hand, the sea witch took her voice. Knowing that she was to be parted from her family forever and had no way of explaining it to them, she blew them a thousand kisses and then swam towards the surface of the sea. The sun had not yet risen when the little mermaid reached the prince's palace. She sat on a rock and drank the potion. Instantly, she felt a pain so sharp that she fainted. When she opened her eyes again, there in front of her stood the prince. She looked down, her fishtail was gone, replaced by a pair of legs. The prince asked who she was, but of course she could not speak. As she was only covered in seaweed, the prince led her into the palace to get some clothes. Every step she took felt as though she were walking on the edge of a knife, just as the witch had said. The prince looked after her from there on and everyone at the court soon became very fond of the strange silent girl. Every night she would get up to dance for the court but each time she did she felt the pain of dancing on sharp steel. The prince would take the little mermaid riding where she was able to smell the sweet scented flowers and hear the birds singing in the woods. Day after day the little mermaid became more dear to him but he never asked her to marry him. One day he was watching her and then he said, You remind me of someone. Last winter I was on a ship that was wrecked and the waves cast me ashore near a holy temple. The youngest of the maidens who lived there 
found me beside the sea and saved my life. Though I saw her no more than twice, she has taken my heart and is the only person in all the world who I could marry. The little mermaid felt such distress that she wanted to cry out that it was her that had saved him, but of course she couldn't. A week later, the prince was getting ready to set sail in a magnificent ship. He was to visit the daughter of a neighbouring king, who his father wanted him to marry. He told the little mermaid that although he must go, he could never love or marry the princess. If I were to choose a bride, I would rather choose you, he said, laying his head against hers. For the first time, the young girl felt the closeness of an immortal heart. They sailed through the night, and the next morning the ship came into the harbour of the neighbouring king's glorious city. The prince's arrival resulted in a great celebration, and there were balls held every night to welcome him. It was a few days before the king's daughter finally arrived, but when she did, and stood before the prince, he cried out, It's you! You're the one who saved me when I was washed up on the beach! Then he took her in his arms. He saw the little mermaid looking sad and said, My fondest dream has come true. You will share in my great joy, won't you? For you love me more than anyone does. The little mermaid smiled at the prince but felt as though her heart would break into a hundred pieces. When the day of the wedding arrived, the little mermaid realised with sadness that this would be her last day on earth. For tomorrow, as was the bargain with the witch, she would become nothing more than foam on the ocean. She joined in the celebrations and danced more wonderfully than she had ever danced before. She dreamed of the home that she had given up and of her family and of the life that she had forsaken for the chance to marry the prince and gain an immortal soul. When everyone had gone to bed, the little mermaid spent an endless night looking out towards the sun, waiting for it to rise and bring her the cold hand of death. Suddenly, she saw her sisters rising up among the waves. But there was no sign of their lovely long hair. It had all been cut off. We have given our hair to the sea witch, they shouted up to their sister. We made a deal with her to save you from death tonight. The little mermaid danced and sighed. But there is one condition, they added. You must kill the prince before the sun rises. Their sister gasped with shock. If you do this, they continued, your tail will return. You will keep your life and come back home and live out your 300 years in the ocean. Then they sank beneath the waves. The little mermaid looked out towards the sun and saw the first glimmer of orange on the horizon. The sun was almost here. She knew that she only had a few minutes to break the spell. She ran to the prince's cabin and looked upon him sleeping. She knew that she could never harm him. She kissed him gently on the forehead and slowly walked out of the room. She climbed up onto the side of the ship took one last look at the sky and then threw herself into the water. While she was waiting to fade away, she looked around and was surprised to see hundreds of beautiful heavenly beings floating around her in the water. Who are you? asked the little mermaid. Her voice had returned. We are the daughters of the air, they replied. We are beings who have no immortal soul, but are doing good deeds to earn one. For centuries we have carried the scent of flowers through the air and brought fresh breezes and healing balm wherever we go. 
when each of us has done good deeds for 300 years, we will gain a soul that will never die. You showed great loyalty to the prince and have now become a daughter of the heir. The little mermaid looked down at her body and saw that she had changed shape and then she felt herself rising to the surface of the water and then up through the sea foam as she joined the daughters of the air. They floated unseen among the humans from then on, doing their good deeds. And each time the little mermaid saw a child being good and kind, she smiled because that meant that she was closer to gaining her immortal soul and entering the heavenly realm.